to our KPC Daily Devotional. I'd like to begin today by reading from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 9, and then part of verse 14 through 16. Finally, all of you have unity of spirit, sympathy, love for one another, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or abuse for abuse, but on the contrary, repay with a blessing. It is for this that you were called, that you might inherit a blessing. Do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. This week, I'll be sharing devotionals from my second collection, Your Inner Dog, Finding Your Place in the Human Pack. Hold that line. It was a large pit bull wandering through the neighborhood. I was walking our four small dogs, three schnauzers and a Manchester terrier. The interloper weighed almost what all four of mine did put together. As he crossed the street to meet us, I saw his hackles bristling. He was in an aggressive mood and was looking for trouble. Without the customary butt-sniffing niceties, he growled, he charged. Seeing him coming, my four quickly shifted position. Cullen, the scout, dropped back, and old Barkley left the lieutenant position behind me and shouldered his way into the middle of the line. In only about two seconds, they had formed a tight line shoulder to shoulder, the full front phalanx. Their shoulders tightened and rolled forward. They lowered their hindquarters. They made a low rolling growl as they braced for the assault. The pit bull was met by a snarling, solid row of teeth. He could not break through. The line did not give way. And again and again he charged from here, from there, to break up their formation. If only one flinched and pulled back, he could break through and they would all be vulnerable, risking serious injury or even a deadly bite to the neck or back. No one flinched. The formation held till the pit bull gave up. Four small dogs could fend off an attack from a much larger dog that outpowered any one of them simply by holding the line. The greatest battles in history hinged on who did or didn't break formation. Now, William the Conqueror defeated King Harold of England only when he tricked the Saxons into breaking ranks. Outnumbered six to one, King Henry V of England still resoundingly beat the French at Ajacourt because his little force stubbornly held their formation. And of course, there was King Leonidas and his 300 Spartans who, through sheer discipline, held a million-man Persian army at bay, buying precious time for the Greek League to muster their forces. Many churches feel embattled, threatened by their various denominational changes and overtures. The culture is changing in ways that church members do not like, and there's a lot of pressure on churches to accommodate beliefs and practices which they find unacceptable and inconsistent with their faith. Add to that power struggles and tensions within the church, or when a church is in transition after its pastor departs, that is all those times when members feel already a little bit unsure and, well, vulnerable. 
Some may be tempted to retreat, withdraw, give up, jump ship, go elsewhere, until the whole congregation is routed and dissolves. What's true for churches is no less true for other social organizations like families, communities. There will always be challenges which threaten the structural integrity and very existence of those human packs that give our lives shape and meaning. And we have to ask ourselves, are the ties which bind us together stronger and more important than those forces which would pry us apart? Do these people and this cause matter enough to me that I'm willing to fight for them? Or will I cut my losses, turn tail, and run away? What will I choose? Individual survival or group survival? In troubled times, any human pack worth fighting for, whether that's your family or your friends or your church, a charity, a community, whatever, must pull together and stand side by side to defend and protect one another. Like it or not, we are engaged in spiritual warfare We know, as it says in 1 Peter, your enemy, the devil, prowls as a hungry lion seeking whom he may to devour. And just like that interloping pit bull, lions always try to break up the herd to isolate their prey. Scatter the group, get them alone, and pick them off one by one. Only in cohesion is their safety. Only in collaboration is their strength. Just ask my dogs. <clears throat> their brains may be no bigger than a walnut, but even they know what to do in a crisis. I wish you a blessed day ahead. Goodbye.